Hi, in this video, we're going to talk about how to set up basic rules for data validation. So for those of you who don't know, data validation rules let us help control what is being entered into a particular cell. So for example, if you have a cell that needs a zip code, you need to require that there are five digits. So this can be done through a data validation rule. If we need a, it to be a number between 1 and 10, we can also set things like that and give an error message back to the user to help them understand what needs to be set into that cell. So let's go ahead and get started. I'm going to select cell B2 and we're going to set a rule for that cell. You can select multiple cells as well. So let's go to data validation and we want a whole number and this time we want it between 1 and 7. I'm going to click OK. So let me go ahead and enter an 8. The error message that we receive here is the default Microsoft Excel error message. This may not be useful for especially a new user of Excel, so there are ways to modify this message to help make it a little bit easier to understand. So let's go ahead on the next one and set those messages. So in this case, we're going to set it to a whole number greater than or equal to zero. So I'm just going to select the drop down and say zero. But before I uh, leave, I'm going to go to the input message and I'm going to say, uh, please enter. I'm just going to go ahead and copy that because we're going to enter it one more place just so I don't have to retype it. So this is the message that will appear when my cursor is in that cell. But then there's also the error message. So if we select stop, it will be a hard error. The user will not be able to input anything that does not meet the rule. You can also use warning, which gives this symbol, so a little bit harsher than informational, which I'll show you next, but it does allow a user to override it. And then information is basically a nice to know, but it has no enforcement at all. So we're going to change it back to stop, which I say is the most commonly used uh, when you're setting up rules, and click OK. Notice where my cursor is here, we see the message. And I'm going to go ahead and enter a decimal, and we see that the error message is a little bit more useful than the, than the default. I'm going to go ahead and cancel. We're not going to send any more messages in this video. You guys don't need to see me type or, or anything. So let's go ahead and do the next one. I'm going to go back to data validation and just go back to the settings tab. This time I want to use a decimal, which is less than or equal to 100. So I can type in a 99.9, .9, but if I type in a 101, I should get the message. When testing, I always try to test something that will give me a wrong answer, so something that shouldn't have been entered in, to make sure I get the error message, and something that is correct. In the next one, we're going to select from a list. So we can use a list or which provides a drop down. So let's go to data validation and let's select a list and let's type male, female. So all you do is select all of your possible options separated by a comma. And this goes ahead and puts in uh, the two options in the default. This helps with data consistency because otherwise some people may type, if you, especially if you have a list, may type it with a capital F, all caps, all small, in this case title case, maybe just an M or an F. So this will allow some data consistency. In the next one we're going to use a cell range. So off to the right we have a range of cells that have the months of the year. So we're going to select that range rather than type them in again. So I'm going to go back to list and in source I'm going to click on this box here and I'm going to use this drop down 
and it looks like I accidentally deleted December, but I'm, so I'm going to select all 12, and I'm going to go back and click OK. I'm going to go ahead and just type December in right now. So if I make changes to that range of data, those changes will be reflected here, and notice December will appear. We can also set up validation for dates. So I'm going to go back to data validation, and I'm going to select date. To do for a specific year, the best way is just to use a between. So I'm going to enter the January 1st of that year and the 31st, probably not the 13th. Otherwise, unless that's what you want. All right. Let's go ahead and click OK. The next one is if you want a particular text length. Now this would work for actual text as in letters or numbers. So if you want just a specific length. So if you had part numbers were always five characters, that would be a good example. Zip codes, another good example. So we're going to go to data validation and we're going to say length. And in this case, we're going to say exactly equal to. And I'm going to say three. So I can type in three numbers, but I can't type in more than three letters. All right. So those are just some of the basics here of how to use data validation uh, with some of the drop down settings. Let's go ahead and do this for some formulas. So the first thing we're going to do is use a function that checks whether or not it, the cell contains text. So I'm going to go to data validation again. This time I'm going to select custom, which allows us to enter in a formula. We're going to always start our function here with an equal. And the function we're going to put in is is text. So if it is text, it's true, it will allow you to enter in that information. If it's a number, it will be false, and therefore you'll get the error message. And I'm going to just say B9, because that's what cell we're in. So if I type in text, it's good. If I type in a number, I get an error message, as expected. Let's go ahead to the next one, which is accept numbers only. So this one's very similar. We use the function is text before. This one we're going to use is number. And there's my cell B10. So this should be accept numbers. It won't accept letters. Very good. And the last one is custom to look for a certain value and compare it to a value in another cell. So right now we have five in this cell. So the value cannot exceed five times what is in this cell. So it cannot be 26. So let's go ahead and use a function. And what we're going to say is is equal, so B11 greater than or equal to, we're just going to say greater than, actually we want to say less than. So less than or equal to five times D11. So we can go ahead and enter in 25, but we can't enter in 26. But now if we change this to 25, we can go ahead and enter up to 100, for example, or even up to 125. If you're trying to find out what cells have data validation because you're not sure, you go to the Home tab and you do a Find, Select, which is way off to the right, and select data validation. And notice it highlighted where the validation is. So data validation works when we are entering in data. That's when it gives the message. However, it can also be used in a little bit of a different way if you already have data entered. So in this example, we have survey data entered. And the value should be between 0 and 10. So I'm going to highlight that entire range. 
I'm going to say data validation, and it should be whole numbers between 0 and 10. I'm going to click OK. Notice nothing happens. But what we can do then is go back to data validation and say circle invalid data. And we notice that it's circling 12 because it's above, minus 5, 11, a minus 1. But here we have a 1. And that kind of looks suspicious because that meets our rule. So if we click on that cell, because it looks like it is a 1, but if we click on that cell we look up in the data entry area, it is actually entered as a 0.8, but it is being displayed as a 1 because of the formatting rules. So this is how data validation could easily be used to help you validate data that is already entered or you've downloaded for some place um, before you process the data more. That way you could check for that error. So that's a pretty simple way to use that. So there's a wide variety of things that you can use for data validation. This was just to show you a few basics to be able to go ahead and use in your spreadsheets. I hope you found this uh, video helpful and hopefully you check out the rest of the Excel videos in this playlist. Thank you.